Broken but beautiful. I'm gonna wait for Facebook to begin to build an audience. Hi, how are you guys? How are you guys? Thank you, thank you so much, young Joe. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you, I love you too, Arpit. Thank you guys, I'm great, Amelia. Um, thank you. If you can begin to just hit share, I'm waiting on Facebook to build an audience. Please hit share and tag someone else to be a blessing on this live. We have been uplifting, we have been up. Uh, encouraging. We have been building other people up. Hold on one second. Just let me pin this at the bottom for everyone that is just now coming on. Hit share and tag others to be a blessing. Um, I want to know what state you guys are while we're waiting on Facebook. Let's shout your state out, city and state right now. Let me see where you guys are tuned in from. Let me see where you're tuned in from. Just comment below your city and state while we're waiting on Facebook to gather an audience. I want to see where you guys are just tuning in from all over the world. Where are you tuning in from? Hello, how you doing, Nunu? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing, Sharon? Sharon Ellis, how are you guys? I want you guys to hit share as you come on, hit share and tag others. Yes, it's a Saturday night, but you can get the word of God before you go out and go out and about. I've been in this 30 day uh, isolation process before God, and I'm just honored for all of the men and women of God that are coming on. Shout out to Alabama, Montgomery, Alaska. Wow. Maryland, Baltimore. North Carolina, Missouri, Alabama, West Palm Beach, Charleston, South Carolina, Virginia, California, Hollywood, Tennessee, Dallas, Texas, Detroit, Michigan, Miami, baby, California, Jacksonville, Mississippi. I'm so honored. It is such an honor. Fettyville, it's such an honor. It's such an honor. Georgia, I see Boston, Massachusetts, Columbia, shout out. Wow, 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 wow. I'm so honored for you guys to even take the time out of your schedule to watch the God in me. Um, so tonight's topic, I wanted to talk about um, being beaten and broken, but beautiful. Oftentimes we are beaten over the head by the situations that we are facing in life. We feel broken. We feel beaten, but we lose our identity in the process. I'm going to tell you that you might be beaten and broken, but you are still beautiful. Have you ever heard the saying that broken crayons still color? You better catch that in the spirit. Broken crayons are still able to do what they were designed to do. They're able to write. They're able to draw. They're able to color. I remember I, I tell this story a lot. I was riding down Sunrise Boulevard one time, and I seen this old beat-up car. I know everybody done had a beat-up car in front of them. I'm talking about smoke shooting out the tailpipe. Coming in through my AC vents, had me in there choking. The car was all dented up. The hood was lifted up on the car. You could tell it had been, been in an accident. And I'm like, why would somebody want to drive this car? But then the Holy Spirit touched me and said that even though it's beaten and even though it's broken, it's still beautiful. Watch this. I'm sure that car was still able to get them to point A and to point B. Still able to get them to work if that's where they're going. Still was able to take them to pick up their children if that's where they they were going even though it looked it ugly on the outside it was still able to do what it, it was designed to do i'm here to tell you you might have been beaten you might feel broken on the inside you might look a little raggedy on the outside you might have been through so much hell but you are still beautiful you are still capable to do what you are designed to do in this season tonight's title is beaten and broken but beautiful. I mean, the kind of beating where you feel like nobody understand where you're coming from. The kind of beating where you feel like, God, I'm at the bottom there. I can't even get any lower, God. The kind of beating where you feel like I got to hide behind my smile, but I'm so broken and tore up on the inside. That brokenness, that feeling unloved, feeling unwanted, feeling alone. Do you not know that even in that process, you are beautiful? God can use you in spite of. If he took me, somebody that was out on the streets daily, 
doing all kind of negative things. I went from selling drugs to preaching the word of God. God is up to something in your life and you can't, you can't be worried about whether people think you're a fake or phony. You're on assignment. You cannot focus on the assassinator because you're on assignment. Beaten and broken, beaten down by the world, beaten down by the situations you face. Some people are being physically beaten by their boyfriends, husbands, beaten and broken down to your lowest of low. When you feel like you have nothing left to live for, God said that he still designed you to be beautiful. He still can use you even in your brokenness. That's the good thing about him. He still can use you even though you feel like you're dead on the inside. Even though you feel like you have nothing to live for. Beaten and broken, but beautiful. Broken crowns can steal color. I used to tell people, tell men, I used to talk to men and tell them, let me tell you something. That same orange that you stepped on, that same orange, because women are like oranges. You, you, you know, they got like a little tough outside, but you squeeze them. And while you squeeze them, you know what I mean? Just, just, just beautiful. But some men, they take oranges and they step on them, beat them down, treat them like they nothing. What that same woman. That same orange that you're taking advantage of and stepping on and mistreating, that next man will take that broken orange, that beaten orange and make orange juice out of it. You better catch that in the spirit. Beaten and broken, but beautiful. Beaten down by your past. Beaten down by things you faced in the past. Broken because your mother or father was never there. Broken because you've never had family. Broken because you've never ever seen your father. Broken because you've been raped by your father. Broken because you've been raped by your brother. Beaten on by men. Back to back relationship after relationship. Beaten and broken. But God said you're beautiful. That same person that has been raped, that same person that has been beaten on in a domestic relationship. Do you not know that God will use your situation, your test and turn into a testimony to bring somebody else out? Been beaten and broken, but you're still able to do what you're designed to do, even in your brokenness. What are you saying, Evangelist Shakira? My heart got broken by that guy or my heart got broken by that woman. God said he'll take that broken heart if you give him all the pieces and turn it into something beautiful. Beaten and broken, but beautiful. I want to encourage you even in your brokenness to cry out to God. I want to encourage you even in your, 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 being, your being beaten down moment. To still cry out to God and trust him. He said he'll turn every test into a testimony. He makes every storm beautiful. Beaten and broken. But beautiful. I'm going to tell you. The one watching this video. That God is up to something in your life. Even though it doesn't look like it, God is up to something in your life. Even though you don't want to get out your bed every day anymore. God is up to something in your life. Even though you're, you're thinking about taking those pills and overdosing. God is up to something in your life. Even though you want to put that bullet in a gun and put it to your head. God is up to something in your life. Even though you feel you have nothing to live for. Do you not know it's at your lowest point that you develop the oil? The oil is in your is in the ground. It's when you at your your weakest moment, when you feel like you are at the bottom, that you develop your strength. Beaten and broken, but beautiful. I'm gonna add the woman of God to come in right now, prophetess. Let's see where is she. Prophetess is not giving me an option to add you. It's not giving me an option to add you. I need you to send me a request, prophetess, to come on in. I need you to send me a request to come on in, woman of God. Hold on, you guys. Hold on, hold on. Hold on.
Okay. Beaten and broken, but beautiful. Beaten and broken, but beautiful. Let's see if the woman of God is ready. Let's see if the woman of God, yes. Come on in. I need you to come in and bless the people of God. Apostle Angela Mathis. I love you. I love you. I love you. Blessings to you, woman of God. I'm honored to be a part of this powerful broadcast that you are doing. Amen. Hallelujah. You released such a powerful word um, in the beginning. And I'm just, listen, God is up to definitely something that is great. And I believe like never before that um, we have to be in the posture to begin to understand the revelation behind what God is doing in our lives. Oftentimes we deal with situations and circumstances that cause our vision to be blurred. I'm going to talk about that for a minute because um, one of the things that I understood growing up as a young woman is that the things that I encountered in life was not a part or associated to my identity. It was only building blocks to bring me to a bigger picture. Amen. And so what I believe that God is doing in this season is that he is um, stripping us from all of the debris. He's stripping us from all of the toxic relationships. He's stripping us from all of the things that we have used as an excuse to not walk in the fullness of our purpose. I believe like never before that the spirit of God is pouring out his spirit on all flesh, that we are going to begin to arise like never before having a revelation of who we are, not not uh, succumbing to the things that have come to strip of us strip us of our identity, not succumbing to the things that will cause us to have this belief system that we are what we experienced. Sometimes, you know, when you deal with people that are broken and you deal with people that have experienced any form of trauma, the enemy comes with uh, all types of tactics and devices, whether they come from broken homes, whether they come from broken relationships, whether they've been raped or molested molested or robbed or whatever it is that has served as a traumatic experience. Sometimes we see children that grow into their adulthood and never yeah. come into a place of total healing. I'm going to pause right there for a minute because some of us have experienced layers of healing. Okay. And, and those layers of healing uh, have to, have to be peeled, have to be, have to be unfolded. And one of the things that I understood about pain, a uh, 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 prophetess evangelist is that pain often is layered. So sometimes because of those barriers that we have erected, those walls, those, those, those 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 things that we see as barricades in our lives the enemy the enemy has strengthened those things and he has come to charge our faith with it because he causes us to start being angry with God you see I've counseled a lot of people that they don't even realize that because of the absence of their father or because of the absence of their mother or because of the things that uh, they've experienced they don't understand that God is still in, in control they don't understand that God still yet loves them. They don't understand that God can take their mess and give them a message. They don't understand that there is yet purpose on their life. And so what they do is they walk through life still holding on to the remnants of the little girl and the little boy on the inside of them. So now what we have is a generation of people that are adults and they still have the mindset. They still see through the eyes of pain. They mm -hmm. still my God, respond through the eyes of their pain. They still, my God, live their life existing in what occurred 10 years ago, what occurred 15 years ago, what occurred 20 years ago. But I believe that if we make a choice, because I know society has taught us that healing comes with time, right? You know, the, we, we've heard that saying that time heals all wounds, but that's not the truth. The truth of the matter is, is that a decision to be healed 
within the context of time is what causes us to be able to produce the fruit of wholeness. I believe that we have a lot of anointed people. We have a lot of people that have the potential to be great, but because they can't press past that pain, because they can't press past their brokenness, they're not producing. And so what God wants you to understand, I want every last one of you on this broadcast to understand that you are not what you experienced. You do not have to choose to be a product of your environment, but you can make a decision today to be whole. You can make a decision today to be healed. You can make a decision today to walk in your purpose. You can make a decision today not to repeat the cycles of dysfunction that have been existing in your family bloodline. Come on, I believe that God will begin to break generational curses off of his people's life. I believe that God will begin to go in and rectify and reestablish, recalibrate your entire atmosphere, your entire circumference of living. Come on, he will begin to go in and reset within you a new paradigm, a new thought process, a new thought system. I believe like never before that the enemy attacks not just your heart, but he attacks your mind because he understands that if, if I can have your mind, if I can have the mental faculties of your mind if i can have all of your mind that i can control your world by your mind i can control how you speak by your mind i can control how you see how, by your mind i can control how you touch by your mind i can control what you have an appetite for by your mind i can control every gate that exists that gives me access to your soul this is the time people of god that i believe that god is saying guard your gates begin to strengthen what remains cast not away your confidence cast not away your faith understand that pain is the very main active ingredient that causes you to be aware of your purpose god begin as i begin to pray about this and i begin to say god what is it that you want me to say to your people he said i want you to tell my people that even though their life may be broken in pieces even though all around them it seems like there is nothing but shattered glass and fragmented pieces my god i feel the holy ghost on this broadcast god began to speak to me he said i have set my people in the midst of broken pieces for them to understand that even though their entire world may look like they're set in a maze god says my god even though those pieces may be resembling puzzles my god don't you know that pieces put together my God reflects a bigger picture. And God said to me, said, my people don't understand that in the midst of their brokenness, that there is a revelation because everything that the enemy has used to come to break me, God began to activate within me greater and deeper levels, higher dimensions of a breaker's anointing. See, when the enemy thought that he was going to allow me to grow up in a dysfunctional family unit, when he thought that me not having having a father was going to affect me when he thought, my God, when I was married to a homosexual man that got mm -hmm. HIV mm -hmm. and God preserved and protect me. See, the enemy thought I was going to lose my mind. But in the midst of those pieces, those puzzles that I did not understand, God began to reveal to me that daughter, I have placed a breaker's anointing on you. See, the very mm -hmm. thing that mm -hmm. against you to break you, to cause you to be set in a place of brokenness was the very thing that I've equipped you, that I've anointed you to be able to speak to the world, to be able to speak to broken first ladies, to be able to speak, speak to broken women, to be able to repair the bridge, be able to repair the breach. See, some of us was born out of the womb of rejection. Some oh of us was God. born we was born out of the womb of abandonment. And because of the spirit of a rejection coupled with the spirit of abandonment, and sometimes coupled with the spirit of the orphan, we go throughout our lives as a vagabond, not knowing who we are, not knowing our purpose, not knowing what we've been set in the earth to do. So God will put you like in a maze. He will put you in the midst of broken pieces for you to dig, my God, for you to begin to discover who am I? See, you don't get your identity from your mother. You don't get your identity from your father. I need to tell somebody on this broadcast tonight, 
change that who you who was a part of your life what they did or what they did not do does not negate God's purpose and plan over your life why because the word of God comes to me saying in Jeremiah chapter 1 that before God formed Jeremiah in the womb of his mother my God, that God knew him, that God sanctified him, that he set him apart. My God, I see one word that you've been using often on this broadcast, and it's isolation. And I believe that God doesn't just have us in isolation to transition us. That's a part of it. But I believe that there's a revelation in the transition because in the transition is a translation. See, sometimes we don't understand that what we, we're not just moving from one place to another but we're moving from one dimension to another my god we're moving from one realm to another we're moving from one place to a higher frequency zone and god begins to deal with me he said i want you to tell my people that this is the time that they don't need to get lost in transition hear me on today god says i'm allowing relationships to sever i'm allowing some people to fall off not because they are bad people not because they're wicked not because they're a hater, not because of any other thing, but that I'm set, I'm sanctifying you. Ooh, I am setting yeah. you apart. Because see, one thing we have to understand about prophets and anybody that has been given a prophetic charge is that God sets you over nations and over kingdoms. God does not want anything in your env environment that uh, regulates carnality. He doesn't want anything in your environment that regulates commonality. He doesn't want anything in in your my God environment that causes you to remain in a comfortable position so now what God has to do is he has to allow pain he has to allow agitation he has to allow friction he has to allow some of the hard experiences of life to push us to a place see I didn't know that I was a powerful woman of God until I was broken I didn't know that God anointed me with a fresh oil and put a word in my mouth for the nations and for the people until I was broken. I didn't know that I had all of these gifts and create creative abilities until I was broken. Because what 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 have, what have we learned in society? It says necessity is the mother of invention. Could it be that the, the needs that you have, the absences that you've had, the voids that you've had is a necessity that's causing you to tap into witty inventions? Could it be that the very thing that you've been complaining Complaining to God about is the very thing that God is using to put you in proper position. Could it be that, uh, here's another one, it's going to hit some people real heavy, because I know we like to think that in our pain and in our brokenness that we're perfect, but no, we're not perfect, so God has to what? He has to purge us. He yeah. has to remove, my God, the things that are outside of anybody else's excuse, because sometimes in life, broken people, one thing I recognize, that they love to do is they love to point the finger on you did this and you did that and you didn't do this yeah, and you yeah. didn't do that but there are some things we have to be honest with ourselves there are some things that we experience in life is because of the bad decisions that we made it's because of the hurt and pain it's because of the brokenness of our own soul one of the things that was so powerful about David is that David was messed up he was jacked up he was broken but he knew how to continually pursue to God. He knew how to continually, my God, cry out to God. The word of God that we read from King James, from Genesis to Revelation, is a reflection of people who experience all kinds of things. Because of the anointing that was on their life, they were able to release powerful words that we're still studying today. I think about the Apostle Paul. I think about the Apostle John. I think about all of these biblical characters who experience all types of tragic things. The Word of God says that Paul was beaten. He was shipwrecked. He experienced all types of, of, of warfare against his life and against his assignment. The word of God even begins to tell us that uh, the reason why he was given a messenger 
or a buffeter of Satan in his flesh was because of the the abundance of revelation that he had. I know that it's been preached and taught even in uh, psychological schools of thought that, you know, uh, Paul just had mental issues like everybody else. And, you know, we try to pacify this, this demon of mental issue. But I want everybody to understand that that's not correct. The word of God says he was given this by God. He was allowed to have this by God because of the abundance of revelation that he walked in. See, when God makes you a heavy hitter in the spirit and you are called to be an assassinator of the kingdom of darkness, you better know that in your yes and in your surrenderance to God, that you will be fought. Just because you give God your life, just because you get saved, just because you love God, it does not exemplify you or make you exempt from going through. And that's one thing that was a big disappointment because the church lied and told us that everything is going to be all right and God is just going to be God in your life and you just going to be, uh, it's going to just be a peaches and cream walk. That is a lie from the pit of hell. The difference between those that do not know Christ and those that knew Christ, that know Christ is the word of God that says, behold, I am with you until the end of the age. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. This is something that we've got to put deep down in our spirits woman of God. See, I'm speaking to some people on this broadcast that don't have a relationship with Christ. I don't care what you have done. Listen, I come from an ex-gang. I, I, I'm an ex-gang member. I come from a very, very, very tragic, my God, dysfunctional, uh, my God, lifestyle. And I'm telling you, if God can save somebody like you, my God, who you said used to sell drugs, who you said used to be a, a hard hitter in the streets, if God can save somebody like me, my God, if God can save some of these others out here in the world that were doing wretched, reckless things, come on, I think about Paul as well. Think about it. He was a persecutor of the church. He was the original gangster. He was ratchet of the ratchet, and God chose him. God marked him. God allowed him to experience a life-altering experience. Why? Because of the call. I need somebody to understand. No matter what it is that you have been, been experiencing, whether it's been your children acting up, whether it's been your spouse acting up, whether it's been a fight in your physical body, the enemy has tackled you with spirits of infirmity, sicknesses, diseases, cancers, diabetes, high blood pressure, stress. I don't care what it is, financial woes, financial needs. I don't care what it is, mental issues, mental needs, soulish realm issues. Know that the Spirit of God has the ability to lift you up. One of the things that I have discovered in my season and in my, 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 my recollecting and in my contending with pain and brokenness is that I had to wrestle with God. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. Some of us don't want to wrestle with God. The Bible says that Jacob, my God, wrestled with God. Can I tell you that he wrestled with God because he was in a place of brokenness. The Bible says that his former identity caused him to have stigmatizations attached to his name, which was um, he was a jokester. He was a trickster. He was, he was all types of things. But as he began to wrestle with God and he allowed God to win, Oh my God. God, that's the key right there. We got to allow God to win. Because see, some of us are fighters. I was a fighter. Listen, coming out my mother's womb, I was regulating and I was telling folks off. And I could get them together. I know what it means to be a fighter. And sometimes we fight God because we're broken and we don't want to be put back together again. I'm here tonight that the Spirit of God says, I am the wheel in the middle of the wheel. I want you to allow me to put you back together again. I want you to allow me to reestablish your identity. I want you to allow me to heal, seal up every crack, seal up every crevice, seal up every gate that the enemy has used to cause you to walk out a life of brokenness. Brokenness was not supposed to be established in your life. The only thing that, that is good attached to brokenness is when you are crushed. 
See, an olive has to be crushed. See, a seed has to fall to the ground and die, which means there's a breaking of the shell to reveal the inner contents. Some of you don't realize that in your death process, in your some of your experiences, that God was only burying you in the ground as a seed. And one thing I notice about people that have the seed of greatness on their life is that sometimes they don't have people around them to remind them that they're great. Because some people have been concealed from. Some of you have been looking for validation because you're broken. You've been looking for affirmation because you're broken. You've been looking for approval from people, and even your mother and your father, and they don't have it because they broken too. Ah. You got to understand, I'm, I'm going to stop here for a moment because I feel the Lord shifting me. The Lord wants me to tell somebody on this broadcast that you need to forgive your parents. You need There's somebody on here that is extremely angry because you were adopted and you did not have the experience of being raised by your biological parents. The Spirit of the Lord says to me that I want you to understand, hear the word of the Lord. I want you to understand that I did not allow you to be born. I did not allow you to, to be raised in the environment of your biological parents because there were things that I needed you to be escaped from. See, sometimes what we see as a curse, oh my God, oh my God, sometimes what we see as a curse is really a blessing. We don't know what we would have encountered. The yes, things that yes. we've been begging for, the things that we've been blaming God for, the things that we've been complaining about. We don't know why God allowed it to go the way that it did. And so God wants me to tell you, whoever you are, stop complaining, stop being angry within the in the inner chambers of your heart with God and with your biological parents because there were things, there were conditions, there were things that would have changed my God, the course of your destiny had you been in that environment. God wants me to tell those of you that have been hurting some of, some people have give, given themselves over to homosexuality because of the void and the love of a mother or a father. Some people have given themselves over to drugs. Some people have given themselves over to addictions, pornography, all types of things because of the voice, because of the brokenness. See, brokenness will drive you. Brokenness will open you up to all kinds of spirits. And before you know it, you're dealing with a legion. You're dealing with an army. I believe, I believe the fire of God right now on this broadcast, Father God, that you will bring forth deliverance over the minds of your people, God. Every spirit that has gripped them, my God, every spirit that has used brokenness, Every spirit that has used, my God, the things that they've experienced from their childhood, I mm, declare mm. supernatural healing. Yeah, over yeah. their minds, over their bodies, God, that you will begin to pull and sever out the roots. Take the axe of the spirit. Take the sword of the spirit. My God, cut asunder every seed that was planted in their vineyard, every seed that was planted in their garden. Father yeah. God, I declare that you will protect, my God, the potency of the seed as you allow them to be buried even in their place of darkness, even in their dark room. Father, let them be developed. Let them see, my God, that even though they can't see the growth that is taking place underneath the ground, they can't see the germination. They can't feel the fertilization. Father, allow them to see through the eyes of revelation who they are. Father, allow them to be reestablished in their identity. Father, we declare that you will protect and preserve even our generation. Some of you have kids who are dealing with things and you've been silent. There are secrets. I'm, I'm picking up all all kind of things on this broadcast. There are secrets that some of you have have been you you swept it under the rug in your family. God says some of you need to confront. Mm, oh my God! Yeah. If you need to go to your auntie. If you need to go to your uncle. If you need to go to your grandmother. If you some of you literally need to say out of your mouth to your perpetrators, to the people that broke you, to the people that did some things to you, to the people that you feel some type of way about. You literally need to say out of your mouth to them if they're still living. I forgive you. Yeah, yeah. See, forgiveness will bring you into a place of wholeness. Forgiveness is not for your perpetrators. Forgiveness is not for the people that hurt you, but forgiveness is for you. We're talking about brokenness. We're talking about the beauty of how God allows us to, to be built from it. See, God yeah, doesn't yeah. want you to just stop. 
from being broken and bruised and battered. He wants you to take those things and create building blocks. See, you yeah. a real boss. Yeah. Oh my God. You a real boss in God. When you can, yeah. my God, yeah. you can, you can release everything that he's caught would destroy you. See, Jesus was a real boss because at the end of the day, his identity was attacked. All the man was trying to do was heal humanity and all he experienced throughout his entire life was nothing but attack. See, you know you a real boss when you in the womb and you ain't even had a chance. You're just an infant. You ain't even had a chance to destroy the works of darkness and the enemy uses kings to send forth death decrees. See, this is what happened to a lot of you. You, you didn't even get a chance to, to, to experience greatness. You didn't even get a chance to experience some things and the enemy sent forth death decrees over your life. He invaded your life through experiences that caused you to your, your mentality to be formed and shaped. The enemy allowed all of these types of traumas and, and different stimulations psychologically to cause you to see through the eyes of pain like never before. Listen, woman of God, I have met some very powerful people, and 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 no matter how anointed your your mantle is, no matter how heavy you are, if they don't get healed, they won't be able to receive the fullness of what God has for them. And so many people, you you've been looking for a particular anointing. Some of you don't even go to church. Some of you don't even go to the house of God because you was hurt in the church, and the, the, the house of God that was supposed to be the house of healing became the house of horror. Horror. I want to speak to that group of people tonight. God says to tell you that we are not, his body is not all the same. And even in the last experience, whether it was your fault or their fault, understand that God has yet still set you in the body of Christ because you are a joint that he has called to supply. God says even in the midst of your quote unquote, my God, church hurt that causes you not to be bothered, don't want to be bothered with nobody, don't want to be bothered with, with people that say they preachers because you've seen so much hypocrisy and you've seen so much issues of people that claim that they're men and women of God. I want to announce to you tonight, be healed. Be healed, my God, because I'm here to tell you God has a remnant. He has a remnant of those that love him for real. He has a remnant of those that, my God, will serve him for real. He has a remnant of those that love his people. God only commanded his leaders, his fivefold ministry gifts. He said, I want you to go out into the world, preach the gospel, compel them to come. And as it relates to our assignment to the church, he says, Ephesians 4 and 11, I I want you to edify. I want you to educate. I want you to mature and perfect to the stature of Christ. I'm here to tell you that there are people, there are many women of God who have this on the forefront of their mind and their only intention in your life is not to slaughter you as sheep. It is not to use you as 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 cattle because there are some who only want to eat feed off of you. They yeah, you're like yeah, they just want yeah. your beef. They just want your meat. They just yeah, want what yeah. you have to offer. But I'm here to tell those people that have been in a place of reservation. Those people that have been in a place of hesitation, those people that have been held, they're in a holding cell of procrastination as it relates to their destiny and their future. God says, I have somebody that is powerful enough for you to connect with. Come on, Mary's, Mary's baby and Elizabeth's baby did not leap until there was a divine connection. See, some of your biggest great breakthroughs, some of your biggest deliverances, some of your biggest releases is connected to someone that has the capacity to bring you further. So this is why you got to be healed. When you come from a place of, of, of not being healed, you don't have the ability to discern who God has anointed in your midst. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You don't have the ability to discern who God has anointed to bring you out of a place of bondage. You don't have the ability to see who a type of Jesus is that's walking in your midst that carries your midst miracle that carries your healing. This is why you got to be healed in this season. Because as you ask God to be an ophthalmologist, as you ask God to be a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. as you ask God to be a cardiologist, to operate on your heart, to operate on your mind, to operate on your eyes, you will begin to see through a different lens. You will begin to see, my God, through the eyes of revelation. Mm -hmm. Revelation mm -hmm. is what's going to lead you to a place of prosperity. Mm -hmm. 
sheep. Listen, everybody want to talk about money. They want to talk about prosperity, but we don't want to talk about the, the, the things that, that, that control us being walking, walking in that place. You have to have the spirit of wisdom upon you. Come on. You got to be wise with your finances. You got to be, you got to be healthy at your soul. The word of God says, beloved, I wish above all that you will prosper and be in good health, even mm -hmm. as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? God's not just interested in filling up your pocketbook with money. He's mm -hmm. not just interested in making you a millionaire. He's not just interested in paying off your student loans. He's not just interested in causing you to have uh, uh, accounts and trust funds. He's not just in interested in your investments, but he's interested in you because the more healthier you are, at your soul. Yeah. yeah. The, the more I can entrust you with, the more I can I can give you a see. We we're not gonna get all these blessings and defy God's principles. Come on, we're not gonna retrieve all of these wonderful things, but but yet be in the place of brokenness. God can't even release a flood of, of, of spiritual water. He can't even he can't even refresh your soul because if you're broken, it's gonna it's gonna seep through those cracks. Yeah, yeah. Filling up a vessel. With oil, try filling up a vessel with water. Anything of a, of any type of substance in brokenness, it won't hold it. That's why some of you got to stop telling folks your business. Because a lot of these folks can't hold water. A lot of these folks are broken. They're broken. Stop expecting. See, this is where the spirit of discontentment and disappointment comes in. Because we have false expectations on people that have not proven that they're whole. If you are broken, this is another thing I'm going to leave you with because I believe I've said a whole lot. If you are broken, get around people that's going to consistently yeah. hold you yeah. accountable. See, a lot of people have remained fragmented because they refuse to embrace the people that God has put in their life to help them overcome. The Bible, as I'm talking, God's reminding me of Tamar. The Bible says that Tamar experienced being violated. Tamar was one, I believe she had a Joseph type anointing as well, because the Bible says she had a coat. She had a garment of many colors. She was a royal daughter and she experienced being violated by her brother Absalom. And the word of God comes to me saying that even in the midst of that experience and even how her brother saw to my God, to to, to, to uh, protect and defend her in the aftermath of it. The Bible says that Tamar made a decision to sit in a house of desolation. She died in that place. She never got mm -hmm. free. My God, I want to tell somebody tonight, you need to have some brothers and some sisters yeah, that's going to yeah. tell you. Listen, I know that, that that's what you experienced, but that's not who you are. I know that's what you encountered, but yeah, that's not yeah. who you are. That, I know that's what you dealt with, but but that's not who you are. You are a conqueror. You are a champion. You are God's elect. Yes, you are yes. God's expression of his genius in the earth. Rise up. Raise up. Lift your hands to God. As long as you can look up, you can get up. I don't yes, care what. Yes. My God. I don't care what you've encountered. I don't care how many mistakes you've made. As long as you can look up. As long as you are in the land of the living. You can make a decision to move forward in God. I just want to encourage you guys, people of God, know that the Spirit of God is mindful of you. The Word of God says he is not a priest that is not touched with the feelings of our infirmities. It's not that we are to overlook these things, but we have to deal with it. Some of us have to simply go back to every mile marker of experience that we've had and begin to literally address and confront these things. This is how you walk in a place of healing. This is how you get to your destined place. When you keep on the forefront of your mind, that God knew me before I was even born. He gave me a, a he gave me my God a mighty responsibility for this particular age. Yeah. It is up to you. Stop waiting on the men and women of God to tell you or confirm to you who you are. Get before God enough on your own yeah. so that yeah. you can't nobody dictate to Sierra Lashawn Jones uh, who she is. Why? Because at the age of twelve, I put myself in a position to hear from God, my yeah. God. And after yeah. the experiences that I've had with God as it relates to angelic visitations, demonic visitations, hearing the voice of God. My life was never the same. Mm. 
I need to tell somebody tonight, your breakthrough is going to start on your face. It ain't going to start. Uh, I, I believe God is using this broadcast and he's going to use you to, to help push the people to him. But I need the people to know that their breakthrough is in God. Yeah. When you yeah. Get off this break, it, when you get off this broadcast, how many of you are gonna get immediately off and into a place of prayer? How many of you are gonna get immediately off and begin to cry out to God? How many of you are gonna literally put yourself on the altar and become the sacrifice and say, God, everything that's in me, everything that's been hindering me, every spirit of resentment, every spirit of unforgiveness, every spirit of jealousy, every spirit of envy, every spirit of, of rejection, every spirit of suicide, every spirit that is been riding my back i'm evicting it now you gotta mm -hmm. rise up. you have the power you got the authority to say to every demonic entity that's been speaking to your mind i no longer give you legal access to speak to me you have the right you have the power you have the authority to dismiss mm -hmm. this this is why women of God, no matter how sometimes we pray, we lay hands on folks until they contend, until they say, this is my, th you are the guardian of your own soul. Yes, yes. Right? Until they come to the place and say, I'm not going to allow these spirits that, that, that God freed me from to, to entangle themselves within me again. Until we get to that place, we won't maintain See, some of us, we get healed for a little while. We feel better. We feel the weight of, of the pressure, of pressures and cares of life lifted off of us for a little while because we made a decision. And then the enemy does one thing to remind you of where you were and you revert right back to that position. Don't fall for the trick tonight. Don't fall for the tricks of the enemy tonight. Maintain your deliverance in God. Maintain. How do you maintain the deliverance in God? How do you maintain your wholeness? How do you maintain your breakthrough? It's by continually feeding your spirit. The word of God says, Follow after the things of the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh if you continue to feast on the word of God. If you continue to surround yourself with strong people. Yes. If you continue, yes. my God, to, to, to worship before God. Some of you, I feel very strongly, you need to recalibrate your atmosphere. Ha, ha. You need to put on some worship music. You need to have the word of God saturating and resounding in your home. Mm -hmm. Some of you, those of you, you who are, are saved and maturing God, you need to get you some anointing oil and you need to anoint your house. You need to anoint yourself. You need to command the, the rulership of God over your house, over your vessel. Why? Because God wants you to maintain your deliverance. Maintaining your deliverance does take work. It is not just a, a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am process. Maintaining your deliverance, maintaining your wholeness takes work every day. No matter how full of the word I am, no matter how anointed I am, I got to constantly make a decision. God, when I'm hurt by this one, God, when this one got my name in their mouth, God, when this one's seeking to contend against me, yeah, I got to yeah. maintain my posture i've got to maintain my position i had a man of god remind me on the on the other day powerful man of god that i received from he told me he said apostle sierra jones i want to remind you woman of god the momentum that's on your life is going to dictate to you in this season that you don't be distracted by your naysayers by your critics by those that are seeking to secretly come against you he said there is no need to fry fish that don't have meat on their bones he says who has has the meat oh my god who has the power who has the influence who has this deep measure of revelation is you mm. you have to protect it stop trying to fry fish that does mm. not have meat on their bones mm. stand mm. on the word of god stop straining yourself at nets stop straining yourself at things that don't matter my god dr sue said them that mind don't matter and them that matter don't mind sometimes mm. you gotta keep those things to the forefront of your life of your mind i want to speak to those of you that are called to preach the gospel i want to speak to those of you that are call to ministry i'm gonna even speak to this real quick because let me tell you this when you serve the people of god you will experience being hurt 
Yeah. You will experience being broken. Your heart, let me tell you, the, 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 more, the most pain I've ever experienced has been at the hands of the people that I've served. Yeah. So I want to talk to every man and woman of God in leadership. This is, this is a place of brokenness because we're seeing pastors commit suicide. We're seeing people commit spiritual suicide, forsaking their ministry, forsaking the call, forsaking the burden, forsaking the yoke. Let me tell you something. When you put on your civic attire and you put that little white yoke around your neck you got to understand that you are a slave it's not glamorous i don't care how we see all these cosmetic moves that dictate all of this glam let me tell you something real ministry is gonna cause you to deal with some serious mm -hmm. stuff my god you're gonna you might be you might have a job experience you might deal with massive loss i i pray for people like the pop you know a woman of god is in the place of god and the that she caused so much damage to the kingdom of God. What is going on? My, in the midst of her losing her child, her youngest child, she forgot to preach to her pain. In the midst of my God, of things that happened even today, I was going to say, my, she's still preaching the gospel, still telling people, get your life right, still compelling people. Let me tell you something. Serving God does not mean you won't have rainy days. Serving God don't mean you won't have her days. It don't mean that you won't experience being broken. But what it does mean is that I am mature enough to understand my life's purpose. And even though I may be like Job, I may lose everything that I got. I'm never going to curse God and die out of my brokenness. Why? Because I can bless him and live. Come on. I can bless him and continue to go on and, and it receive my inheritance and receive my restoration. See, if, if Job had have changed his conversation, Right. And he and instead of cursing his 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 morning, commanded his morning, perhaps God would have ushered him out of that season of testing a little faster. Perhaps mm. certain things would not have happened. Perhaps things would have been totally different had he recognized that he was under spiritual attack. See, some of us don't realize that the things that we're experiencing has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with what we're carrying. Yeah, yeah. It has everything to do with our children. It has everything to do with what the enemy perceives as a futuristic threat. See, some of you don't realize that you are a threat. You are a problem. That's why you go through hell. That's why the enemy wants you to be irretrievably broken to the place where you never get put back together. But I want to announce to you tonight that the potter wants to put you back together again. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stay in a place of broken. You don't have to remain fragmented. You don't have to remain. All of these spirits, the spirit of murder, the spirit of rage, the spirit of anger, all of these things that we see breaking out in the world is as a result of man brokenness. God is raising up leaders in the earth that are going to be healers they're going to help you come into a place of healing but we've got to be in a posture to receive what god wants to do i feel the, such a, a weight of god's glory on this broadcast right here in this moment i want to invite every last one of you that do not know jesus christ as your personal lord and savior this broadcast is about you being being healed this broadcast is about you being put back in the proper position with god if you have broken your fellowship with god perhaps you got saved a couple of years ago and you fell into some things and you walked away from God. God says you right now in this moment, all you got to do is lift up your hands and begin to say that I recommit my life back unto the Lord. See, the church has got to get back. The people of God, the leaders of God have got to get back to the souls. So right here in this moment, pray a quick prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, Yes. I admit that I have sinned, but I believe that God, you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And I am asking you, God, to give unto me as you have freely uh, expressed the gift of eternal life. Father, I ask that you put me back in right standing with you as I open my heart. 
Lord, as I open my mind, as I open myself to be a host of the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of Jesus, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Cleanse me from every spirit that has ruined and sought to soil my life and my future. I evict every demonic principle spirit that's been ruling in my life, ruling in my bloodline, ruling in my world. I evict them now by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. I confess that I am now a member of the kingdom of God. I am no longer a part of the kingdom of darkness. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. Every last one of you that have prayed that prayer, I declare that God will place men and women of God in your life that will help strengthen you along the way. My God, I pray that you will find a pastor that will help you along the way. I pray that God will place only his best in your life. I pray that the Holy Ghost will set you on fire. That some of you will put down my God, your your your, your smokes. You will put down your black and mouths. I'm seeing somebody right now. God is, getting, God is hitting you. You're feeling the fire of God. God says for that one that's been con- Continuously smoking black and mouths. God said, I'm going to take the taste. I'm going to take the desire out of your mouth because deliverance is hitting your life now. That one that has been, that has been uh, picking up alcohol and picking up all types of things to serve as a, a sufficiency of their soul. God says, I'm getting ready to strip you of that. God says, as you lean and depend on me and not lean to your own understanding, I I will become your source. I will become your shield. I will begin to raise you up. I will begin to do my mighty work in your life. Know that the Spirit of God loves you. And love will lift you. Love will not condemn you, but love will lift you. I need to also tell somebody tonight, and I'm going to stop here, woman of God. I need to tell somebody tonight, no matter what mistake you've made, I don't care if it's adultery. I don't care if it's homosexuality. I don't care what it is. God says there is no condemnation in Christ. If you begin to put yourself and you begin to ask God to to bring you into a place of wholeness, I promise you he will. Seek God while you can. Seek him with all that you've got. It is already done in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we seal every word that has been released over this broadcast. We declare, Lord God, that it will go to it will go to the ones that you've intended it to go. Father, our purpose and our, our assignment and our focus is not on going viral. It is not on becoming someone or, or being in front of people to showcase anything. But God, we're about the real work of souls tonight. Father, we declare that this message will go to the people that you have assigned it to reach don't take that in mind and we decree and we declare these things tonight and it is by the mighty name of jesus that we end i end this and conclude what it is that god has given me to say i believe that god has shifted some some lives he shifted some of your postures he gave you a new perspective of your experience last thing i want to leave you with is knowing you are not what you've experienced yes but you are the expressed genius the expressed intelligence of god you do not have to choose to be a product of your environment but yeah, choose to, yeah. to make a decision to be healed to make a decision to be whole to tr- be transferred from being beaten and broken into a place of being built God is building you. He's building stature in you. He's building strength in you. He's building stamina in you. He's building long suffering in you. He's building the fruits of the spirit in you. He's cultivating greatness. Greatness is never born in comfortability. It is always born in contempt and strife. So know that you are great in God. If you've gone through hell, come out on fire. Yes, if you go yes. through hell, come out on fire. That's for somebody tonight. If if you've gone through hell, come out on fire. God yes. bless each and every one of you on tonight. It has been my honor. You, you get you some rest as you are tired. I know. I believe that God is going to continue to build momentum in you. My God, and the words that he's placed in your mouth in this season is a sharp word. God yes. says continue to speak. Your voice is echoing and resounding 
throughout the nations. Woman of God, you are touching so many people's lives. God says, allow me to build you and manufacture you the way that I want you to be. God says, my God, I will not allow anybody, my God, to take the credit for who you are because ooh, you ooh. know your own individual experiences that you've had with the Lord. God says, I have, I have called you for such a time as this. You are restoring the office of evangelism. Ooh, Let me say this, God. Of God, you are restoring the, the power gift of evangelism. In this season, everybody seeks to want to be an apostle. Everybody wants to be a prophet, but one of the most power gifts, the most powerful gifts of fire and glory that God set amongst us is evangelism. Yes, God says, yes. you're not just an evangelist. He's placed prophetic words in your mouth. God says, I'm going to even begin to sharpen you prophetically. God says, the things that you've been dreaming, the things that you've been seeing, God says, I'm getting ready to bring those things to birth and bring them to pass. God says, there's some things that I place in your spirit that I need you to step out on. Yes, yes. Season that is coming upon you, that how you flowed and how you have ministered, ministry is getting ready to change. God says, I'm getting ready to establish your footsteps in the earth. There are so many great things that I'm telling you, it's bigger than social media. I'm telling you, if you step out on what God has placed in your spirit to do, I am telling you, the nations will follow you. You are a leader that God has set in the earth and it's by the power of your transparency it's by the power that god has set you in this generation as a sign woman of god god i'm telling you you have a strong mantle of deliverance that you have not yet walked out yet god says i'm going to send people in your life that's going to help cultivate and train mm, you mm. for the ministry of deliverance i see you casting out demons i'm not talking about just people responding to the anointing of God and all this fake stuff that we see circulating on uh, social media. Not words of just claiming to be supernatural words or just claiming to be certain things. God says, I'm going to allow the evidence. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to allow the evidence to be evident in your life. The mm, word of God mm. says that we ought to make full proof of our ministry, right? So God says, I've set you in the earth as a sign, and I'm about to cause you to render forth full proof in your ministry. God says, whatever it is that you need to legalize, whatever it is that you need to legitimize, God mm, says, go mm. out and do it because your wealth, everything concerning your life is attached to your obedience in the season. Do not be afraid. Let me say this. There have been uh, uh, witches and warlocks that have picked you up in the realm of the spirit. Some of the things that you experienced as far as warfare has been because of word curses and things that have been targeted sent your way because of the damage that you are doing to the kingdom of darkness. But God says, I have set there are an elite group of intercessors. God says, do not necessarily reveal who these intercessors are. They are to be hidden because they serve as as your protection. God says, you, let me tell you something. There are some people that have been trying to keep you below the radar and just keep you as little old evangelist and little uh, little sister. But God says, that little sister and that, that little you is getting ready to expand. Samuel is growing. Samuel is growing. Samuel is growing. Where you started out is not where you shall remain. God says, as you continue to grow, as you continue to go, I will shoot you up as a rocket and you will break barriers my God, you will break. You are already breaking racial barriers. Oh, oh my God. Yes. You are already breaking generational barriers. You are already a trendsetter in your own right. You are already a trailblazer in your own right. Yes, you with your goals. Yes, you yes. with your dreams. Yes, you with your lashes. Yes, you. Yes, you. God says, I have called you for such a time as this. Woman of God, you're getting ready to go through a tremendous metamorphosis. Say of God, there are things that God says, I'm getting ready to change. I'm getting ready to change the dynamics of who people have known you to be concerning the former work because I'm placing a ladder glory on your life. This yes, ladder glory yes. is going to reveal the greater. Get ready for greater woman of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stay consistent. Stay faithful. Stay discerning. God's going to also sharpen your discernment mm -hmm. like never before. Thank you, Lord. So you just go keep going through a, a, a continual season of isolation and transition. 
And it's like once you get to one place, he's shifting you to another. Yeah. God says, yeah. Come to that. Because this is the ascension realm. Yeah. You're yeah. ascending, you're becoming. And God says, It's not just isolation, but it's impartation. Yeah. Yeah. There are supernatural deposits and supernatural impartations that only take place in the place of sanctification. In the place of being set apart, in the place of not just dealing with transition, but being translated. Yes. See, there are yes. messages, the language of heaven has to be translated, right? If I speak, if I come to you and I'm speaking Mandarin, you won't be able to understand it except I have a translator. So God says the translation is twofold. He says, I'm going to give you messages that will begin. I will use you as a translator that you will begin to translate my words. You will begin to articulate my messages to my people your own way. God says you may not necessarily use big words. You may not necessarily communicate the way that others Yes, are communicating. Yes. But God says, I've given you your own style. I've given you your yes, own. Yes. Do not change the dynamics of who you are because that is what establishes your difference. Thank God you, says, I'm getting ready to translate you. The Bible says that Elijah, when he was taken up, he didn't transition, he was translated. Right, right. Enoch was not, he never died. But he was translated. So, people of God, hear me tonight. You are not stuck in transition. Yes. You're not yes. just moving from one place to another. But you are being translated. You're being translated from one world to another. Yes. yes. I'm telling you, God's going to bring you. I'm telling you, I also see a season of heavy consecration and fasting upon you. Mm. Um, there, mm. there will be a couple of days that God says, I'm going to call you all away from social media, maybe for about three to seven days. And God says, in that time, I'm going to download so much on you. God mm. says, even when you go live. The same power and glory that's on my life that where I've gone live and he's shown physical manifestations, I might got tangible signs of glory. God says there will be tangible signs of glory that will be mm -hmm. on your life. Mark my words. You are one that God has set apart for this generation. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. For this generation. I, oh my God, I, I just feel that very strongly. I see that in the realm of the spirit. You are growing. Samuel is growing. Mm -hmm. says, even though there, there have been aspects of your spiritual walk, and I'm going to stop because I'm seeing so much at this moment. God says that there have been aspects of your spiritual walk that you've had a lot of questions and you've gone to different people that are set in high places to seek yeah. to experience. Yeah. And they did the best that they could. But God says, this is the hour that I'm getting ready to make you an interpreter of your dreams. Yeah. God says, no, yeah. you have to seek counsel and to a degree on some of the things that I'm showing you because you you're going to have the understanding of it. Yeah. You're going to have the revelation of it. You're going to be able to pinpoint with precision what it is that God is speaking to you. Therefore, with, with this being uh, an establishment, it will not be contaminated and you will not be thrown off by somebody else's revelation. Mm. God said, oh my God, this is a season that I am establishing your footprints in the sand. Jesus. Jesus. Your footprints in the sand, your voice print in the earth, your voice print, your fingerprint. Oh I call you for such a time as this. I thank you for allowing me to be a part of this powerful move. I pray that the people of God was blessed. I pray that you was blessed. And I'm just honored to serve in the kingdom of God. God bless you, evangelist. They want to reach you. They want to reach you. Absolutely. You can follow me on social media on my page. I have a ministry page, Apostle Sierra L. Jones. Um, she has me tagged on this video so you can follow my, my personal page. You can also follow me on Instagram, Prophet Dr. CLJ. Um, for those of you that are in the Macon area, we are establishing a ministry here. If you're in the Atlanta area and you're looking for someone that carries the weight of the word of God, someone that carries a, a heavy mantle, you're more than welcome to come on out and see us um, in March, March 22nd through the 24th. We're having a powerful three-day service that's going to just 
echo throughout the region that the supernatural ones are here. I'm not coming by myself, but I'm coming with a company of those that have been called, that have been set apart for such a time as this. Also, I would say, follow me. Make sure you follow me, subscribe, and let let me know that you were on this broadcast. Let me know that you were blessed. And um, just subscribe so that you can stay abreast to all the things that we're doing in the kingdom of God. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm not about trying to make my name great, but I'm trying to make the kingdom of God advance. I'm trying to make Jesus famous because it is not my will. It is not by my power, but it's by his strength. And so all glory be to God. All the information is on my personal page. If you like to know about it or just send me a yeah. comment. And then I can do Absolutely. Absolutely. I post a flyer here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I love you too. You are such a powerhouse. Such a powerhouse. And I want to tell you personally that I am proud of your growth. I, am, I, I may not see everything that you post and do, but you know, the things that I have seen is always rooted in the heart of God. You're always encouraging somebody. You're always pouring out. You're always helping people to come to Christ. And that is one thing that I have, you know, admired about you and your heart. You are genuine. You really, truly love God and you want to be right. And and I'm telling you, that is something that a whole lot of people are missing. There, there are people in the world that are operating off of their gift alone. They're not even in the least concerned about others and, and the body of Christ. They're concerned about building their empire and their name. But I, I just thank God for people like you who, who have influence. You have a platform and you you still yet maintain that humility. You've not changed in some in some ways where some people as they elevate they change. You know, and that's that's something that we gotta that's that's also a place of brokenness. Because see some of us we lack affirmation. So when we finally do get the influence, we change. Yeah. But no, yeah. you're whole and you heal. You remain. The same holy person you were from the beginning. Amen. So um, I'm going to end there so much. I can go all night, but I'm going to get off of here. I will. Absolutely. Absolutely. And tonight was day five of my isolation process. Um, day one. If you guys have missed it, please just scroll back down on my page. Day one was uh, cut back and cut off. That was the message. Day two was you can't give up. Day three was a delay is not a denial. And day four, what, what did we speak on last night? It, oh God, it's just so much. Day